Hello Pisces. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kaylee and this is Burkana Star Tarot. Sorry, squirrel. <laughs> I try to be all serious. It never works for me. <laughs> anyway, today for you I have a 12, 12 card Celtic cross spread. I'm going to pull a couple of uh, Norse runes and a couple of my, couple of my oracle cards to uh, just fill out the message. So let's see what we have. Wow. <laughs> this didn't really flip over. Um, it just kind of jumped out and I, it's hilarious. Empathy. Um, I'm open to seeing both sides of the situation. I'm talking to a Pisces. I'm talking to Pisces. I think they're really good at seeing both sides of the situation. Holy, we're jumping like fish, literally just jumping. Oh my goodness, the other signs I've done so far have not been like that. All right, just one, please, Spirit. Just one. This one would be nice. I'm trying to keep these like concise. I'm thankful for this life and the opportunities it presents. What are you grateful for, Pisces? I'm grateful to be alive. I've heard it said that, uh, different situations that cause you to grow are called uh, another leaping learning opportunity. Are you going through another learning opportunity, Pisces? <sighs> this soulful card is telling you it is time to stop, close your eyes, and become mindful of the incredible gift the universe has bestowed upon you in offering valuable and unique lessons tailored especially for your soul. This is an important reminder to express your appreciation for what has been, what will be, and most important, who you are. It is time to acknowledge the universe how thankful you are for being provided these opportunities, for insights and understanding. It is also time for your soul to share recognition of all of those loved ones in your life upon the earth or in spirit who have helped form who you are now. You may even find it helpful to begin to write a list of all the things you are grateful for in your life. When you put forth the contemplation and energy to do this, it awakens thoughts that acknowledge your connection to all that is. By bringing yourself into a state of gratitude, it not only has a transforming effect on the energy in the sacred space surrounding you, it also brings an overall sense of health and well-being. <clears throat> Who or what can you be grateful for right now? Sometimes when you go through hard lessons, it's really hard to be grateful for those lessons in the moment. I mean, it's impossible for me to be grateful for those lessons in the moment. I'm usually too mad, usually too angry. takes time. You need to process all of those emotions. But I personally have had found it very, very helpful to keep a list of things that I'm grateful for. <clears throat> I also like to write about what I do for myself that makes me grateful to me. Um, and that honestly is, is just because I struggle with caring for myself and interestingly enough my Pisces sister is struggling with that right now not taking care of herself so what are you grateful for Pisces 
<sighs> Today I'm grateful for the sunshine. I glow in the dark, though, so I'm trying not to sit in it. <laughs> I'm grateful for the food in my belly, for the ability to film tarot online. Whoa, Emperor! What's up, Emperor? Alright, I'm not sure when that flipped, but that's your first card. Wow, Pisces. Kicking it into high gear. Um, I also think this is interesting <clears throat> because Mars, uh, tropo tropical zodiac-wise, is moving from Aries, sorry, from Pisces into Aries. So, might feel a little bit less pressure once that happens. Uh... <laughs> And, uh, anyway, the secondary thing here is that, um, you are the emperor, baby. You are the emperor. And the more gratitude you bring to what you already have and for what you will receive, the easier it is to, uh, go for these things. So crossing the emperor's ace of swords. Wow, Pisces. You have the ace of swords. This is something from the universe that has been dropped into your lap. Either a realization, who knows, but it is something to do with your intellect, with your creativity. Uh, it's information or an idea. It's a conception of something to do with air. So Pisces, we've got fire and air already. All right, third position, your goal, destiny, is the Lord of Earned Success. <clears throat> so, Lord of Earned Success, it's pretty straightforward. It's, you are using the, uh, your mental aptitude and, um, your skill set to apply the just right amount of pressure, sharpness, just the right parry and swipe to get through what it is that uh, you need to get through. So you're sitting in some, some serious success right now as the emperor and you've earned it. That's what this is saying. And you're earning more. So far past Lord of Shorten Force. It's so, a lot of Gemini energy here. <laughs> So the Eight of Swords, being Jupiter in Gemini, Jupiter indicates that it is a very uh, expansive energy. So the Lord of Short and Force can sometimes be said um, like uh, over forceful, um, like uh, instead of this like precise, exact energy of the Six of Swords, it's like you know when you're not used to say sticking up for yourself um when you first start to stick up for yourself you know the pendulum it doesn't sit right in the middle right away it's like you act like this and then 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 slowly 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 you get to come to the middle um but, you know it takes time it takes time and maybe you're realizing this but anyway that's the far past recent past influence is the king of swords Holy swords, man. So the King of Swords is two deacons of Aquarius, one deacon of Capricorn. I kind of feel like this King of Swords has taught you some serious lessons. It feels like this King of Swords has really assisted you in learning how to be precise and um, uh, just hone your skills. So that's pretty cool. Um, I also like to note that the King of Swords, actually, this makes me think of Saturn. Um, <clears throat> and he's holding a sickle there, which is actually the symbol for Saturn. Um, and Saturn rules Aquarius and Capricorn. So anyway, you could take it as someone with very Saturn-like energy uh, has taught you these lessons. Could be like a father type figure um, or uh, just someone in your life that exhibits a lot of responsibility and humanitarian energy. Alright, your, your recent, sorry, 
your upcoming future influences at the Three of Swords. It came out reversed, but it could really honestly be either way depending on how you are resonating with this video. So, the Three of Swords being the Lord of Sorrow. Saturn. Saturn and Libra. Uh, there's just a lot of swords going on here. Like, wow. I'm like I'm feeling anxious in my body while trying to do this reading. Um, like holy. <sighs> All right. So despite these lessons, there still will be sorrow. Um, you can sit in that sorrow and allow it to eat away at you. You can um, be envious of other people's achievements you can be a horrible sport about it or you can take that sorrow and use it as fuel for an epic epic comeback oh my god <laughs> so your position right now the next card out is the queen of swords you are embodying the queen of swords the Queen of Swords is two Deacons Libra, one Deacon of Scorpio. And I mean, considering how much uh, sword stuff's going on on my table here, I'm not surprised. So, you are the Queen of Swords. With that Libra energy and that Scorpio energy at their highest, they seek justice and truth and balance and goodness and right and you know they're probably a little flowery um and they will investigate to find oh sorry did i say scorpio i meant virgo two deacons libra one deacon virgo scorpios further away anyway <laughs> so right justice truth honor all that beautiful stuff um and uh they'll do it with like in in service um, they're very hard workers. At their lower vibrations, um, they can be quite quick to the chopping block, so to speak. Uh, too quick to the chopping block, you know, that's where this, like, shortened force comes in there. Sometimes, you know, the Queen of Swords will get fed up and just go out a cutting. But it seems like you might be balancing that energy out. Hey, another swords card. This is nuts, you guys. I shuffle so much. Okay, so <clears throat> you are the queen of swords right now. That's great. Uh, and your inner emotions are the four of swords. So you're resting. Awesome. I'm glad. <laughs> This is rough. <laughs> Holy Pisces. <sighs> Lord of Rest from Strife. So you've done the cutting that's necessary and now you're resting. This indicates some time of meditation, some time of you know, rejuvenation. Um, it's exactly what I was talking about with like taking care of yourself. It really ties right back into that it's important to keep your mental self sharp and like the mental energy is great um but pisces you need to feel into your body you need to connect with source you need to be nurturing your art you need to be nurturing your um your real connections. So anyway, the next card out indicates your inner emotions. It's the Eight of Cups. So this is the Lord of Abandoned Success. This is Saturn in Pisces. And uh, <clears throat> this is really showing like, there's a whole lot of constriction in your energy in your energy field so much so that there is no water coming out those eight cups are great 
but without any water flow, they're not satisfying. Um, by the way, that's the second eight. Yeah, second eight. There's a little bit of everything from all parts of the zodiac here. Um, kind of. There's a lot of energy going on, but this is like some really intense constricting energy. <laughs> wow. <sighs> I didn't know I had that uh, that intense of a um, connection with Pisces, uh, except actually I recently learned in my sidereal uh, chart, I actually have Mercury in Pisces. So I'm connected with y'all. Anyway. <clears throat> the outcome of this. Oh my god, thank god. Oh. <laughs> Holy fuck, I'm so happy. I was afraid to turn the last card, I'm not gonna lie. Empress! Hey! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> Alright, Pisces. So this is what's going down, okay? You are embodying your divine masculine energy right now, and it's beautiful. Keep it up. You have some ideas, some um, insights, some awareness to move forward with. You have two days to act on it. Go. You're guaranteed success, all right? You're guaranteed success as long as you use precision, right? Don't be overforceful and don't be underforceful. Don't be passive. Don't be aggressive. Try to find that assertive middle ground, okay? All right. <clears throat> when this pain comes in, because it will, sorry, we're in 2020, it's just gonna happen. When this pain comes in, um, remember who you are. You embody justice and you embody service. And with your high empathy and stuff, you should be able to balance it out. Just remember that you must rest. Listen to your body. Listen to the parts of you that are telling you to rest. And nurture yourself. For the love of God, please nurture yourself. These cups will be sitting there for you to come back to, okay? It's not abandoned. Unless you never come back to it. And furthermore, if your own cup is full, you can't fill others' cups. And the outcome, if you listen to this advice, is you'll be united. Now, either this is saying your inner masculine and feminine will unite. Or maybe you're about to meet your divine counterpart. Um, yeah. I mean, the most important thing I can say about the whole, like, twin flame and soulmate journey and stuff is that if it's not meant to be, it's not going to be. You cannot force it. You cannot force something that isn't ready to go. Pisces, your rune. Othella. This is Othella. This is the rune for inheritance. Um, and it also represents, like, the enclosed family estate. Um, and its protection. So... Othilla can sometimes indicate a separation, like a divorce, um, and simultaneously an inheritance. So, I that really rings true here. You're definitely, definitely, definitely cutting something out 
um, whether it be a relationship that's not meant for you anymore, uh, a situation that's not meant for you anymore. Either way, you're cutting yourself, literally cutting yourself free. I hope none of you are actually literally cutting yourself free, but you're cutting yourself free and once you separate, there will be an inheritance. Um, sometimes Athila talks about how we have to let go of a little bit of our ego and allow some endings to happen in order to receive the new in order to receive the inheritance this could well indicate like uh like a family inheritance like monetary wise or very much so i really believe more spiritual inheritance um so like skills and powers that your ancestors or previous life path lives may have had Wow, Pisces. Wow. <laughs> I just flipped and I wasn't going to take it, but I, sh I should um, rise above your problems. Shit, where'd it go? All right, we'll just see if it comes out again. Yeah. Take this time to rest. Take this time to cut out what you don't need, what's not yours, what's not serving you. Make sure you end the last cycle because you're stepping into a brand new one, brand new world, brand new 2020. And um, you very well could be receiving a new partner. That could very well be what the emperor and empress in this reading does indicate. So for some of you, um, it could be a romantic partner, um, but I... I don't always, I don't think it's, this always means romantic partner. It could very well just be a healthy friendship, a healthy business partnership, a healthy um, family relationship. The important thing is that you allow the last cycle to end fully. Honor your feelings, rest, fill your own cup. And that is it. So thank you very much, Pisces. This is a longer reading than normal. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, hit like. Uh, definitely hit subscribe so you can hear more from me. Um, I uh, am still figuring out exactly how I want these readings to look. So let me know what you like. And if it resonated, great. Let me know. And if it didn't, also let me know. I'm curious. I want to know how I connect with you guys. So yeah. Thank you for joining me on this wonderful afternoon and have a good week.